I'm coming at you live on tape from Sydney, Ohio. And today is the last part of the NWO video series. We're wrapping it up. We're getting into NWO 2000, NWO and WWE, the NWO Legacy, NWO going into Hall of Fame. Eric Bischoff going into Hall of Fame. All the NWO deaths. Well, not all of them. Just Scott Halls. Okay. So, NWO 2000. In December, late December 1999, the NWO reformed in Nash Hall, Jeff Jarrett, and Bret Hart in WCW. This time under the black and silver. They interfered and helped Bret Hart beat Goldberg for the WCW Championship, WCW World Championship. But then Hart, or then Goldberg got injured, damaging their limo. And I think Goldberg didn't even want to do, was matching their windshield. And Goldberg didn't even want to do the stunt because he said he wasn't a trained stuntman. <clears throat> so then they continued the feud with Sid Vicious, Chris Benoit. And Terry Funk. Well, then Bret Hart got injured in a rematch against Goldberg, and that was his career ending injury. But then Nash faced Terry Funk for WCW commissionership and won it, and Nash became WCW commissioner. But that was short lived because Nash suffered, uh, I think it was an ankle injury, if I remember right, because we're getting into a lot of injuries here. And a lot of them happened to Nash. So Nash suffered an ankle injury and had to take time off. But the NWO was also, also came out with the NWO girls, which was with Menaja, Tylene Buck, Pamela Paulshock, and April Hunter. And Scott Hall came back, and then he was he would come out with the NWO girls, who would later become his freaks. Several of these girls were former porn stars. Okay, so then Jeff Jarrett took on Sid Vicious for WCW title. But Scott Hall also tried to take on Sid Vicious for WCW title. So there was a three-way, which Sid Vicious won, but then Scott Hall was fired from WCW. They say he was released. He was actually fired due to his alcoholism, finally. So then Jeff Jarrett once again took on Sid Vicious for the world title and lost again. Jeff Jarrett would, would go on later and win WCW World Titles. And then shortly after that, Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff came back, vacated all the titles, and said, we're completely redoing everything, and the NWO disbanded. And Jeff Jarrett, Scott Steiner... And, let's see, Bret Hart was gone. Jeff Jarrett and Scott Steiner would go on and join the New Blood. Steiner would still come out with some of the girls. He would call them his freaks. Well, Kevin Nash, when he returned from injury, would join the Millionaires Club, which were originally supposed to be the bad guys, but your fans cheered the Millionaires Club, so the New Blood became the bad guys. Then in then in WWE, then WWE bought WCW for cheap. And 2002, Vince McMahon kept claiming he was going to bring in poison to kill the WWE because he didn't want to share it with Ric Flair, who had become co-owner of it in storyline. And the poison was the NWO, Hogan, Hall, and Nash. 
And when the NWO came in, they immediately started focusing on the major stars and causing trouble. The major stars being The Rock and Stone Cold. And Hall faced, Sto Hall faced Stone Cold at WrestleMania and lost. And The Rock faced Hogan at WrestleMania in a famous match. And Hogan shook his hand afterwards and became a face. And Hogan lost, by the way. And that made Hogan out of the NWO and became a face again, though it was still known as Hollywood Hogan as a face because they lost the rights to the Hulk name, the Marvel, because the contract was up and Marvel wanted nothing to do with WWF at the time because WWF was so controversial. But he, so he was still known as Hollywood Hogan. He was just a face, but he kept some of the heelish stuff. But Hogan always had heelish stuff, even in the 80s. He was just so over, nobody noticed. So he was a face, and he, him and The Rock, and it was also Kane, started feuding with the NWO. Well, Hall and Nash then recruited X-Pac, who was six, in WCW, also known as Sean Waltman, to join them. Well, Nash got injured Nash suffered a bicep injury and was injured and shortly later the NWO was recruited to uh, Raw thanks to the brand split that came up. They were they were um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Drafted to Raw. As I said, Nash was injured. But Big Show joined them. So then, uh, Vic Flair joined the NWO while he was feuding with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, Ric Flair, due to Nash being injured, the Hall being let go, partially because he was dealing with alcoholism still, and partially because he had other personal reasons to be let go, that he wanted to let go of. <laughs> Ric Flair recruited Booker T. Well, Booker T's partner, Gold Dust, also won it in the NWO and tried repeatedly to get in, but was repeatedly shot down. Well, Nash then came back and then recruited Shawn Michaels into the NWO, who was the first member of the NWO who did not compete in WCW at any point in his career. And he super kicked Booker T out of the NWO, and the NWO carried on for a little while there. But the Nash, in a 10-man tag match, he tagged in and gave, I don't even remember who he gave, a, I, I think he gave a super kick to, he gave a big boot to Booker T and then went for a tag, went to make a tag and tore his quad walking. And then was once again put on the shelf. And then a few weeks later, Vince McMahon came out to the NWO music and announced the NWO was over. And later that night, Eric Bischoff became the general manager of Raw. And the rest of the NWO went their separate way. Shawn Michaels returned to active duty. Big Show was drafted SmackDown. X-Pac was released due to his ongoing issues with alcohol and drugs. And Ric Flair went on to active duty and became a member of Our Revolution. That was pretty much the end of the NWO, except for NWO Japan, which I'm not getting into. Now, the NWO would appear on WWE TV at various times, never really in a wrestling role again. At Hulk Hogan's 61st birthday, Hall and Nash would appear with Hogan, and Hogan would rip off his Hulk Rule shirt and reveal an NWO shirt.
They would also appear in a segment, Hulk Hogan, Natch, and Hall would appear at a Raw reunion show to help beat up, um, I don't even remember who it was. Oh, the OC with a number of other people. And later on in 2020, the NWO, Hogan, Hall, Nash, and Sean Waltman, who was X-Pac and Six, who, so he was in the NWO twice, were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And then in 2021, Eric Bischoff was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, the NWO's legacy, a lot of people ripped off their logo, such as Van Yorton for his RKO shirt. WWE NXT ripped it off for their NXT Next Generation shirt. And a lot of other people used an NWO similar logo. Ole Miss, when their coach came in in 2000, when their wide receiver coach came in in 2017, he used a, he won something special. So he had a championship belt, such as a WWE style championship belt made with the NWO logo on it, with NWO on it, standing for Nasty Whiteouts, and that is given on sideline to anyone who scores a touchdown and is sent home with the receiver who does a particularly good job that week. Also, w WCW pay-per-views starting in 1997 were given split rant promotion <clears throat> between WCW and NWO. And, and, and the NWO had their own pay-per-view in WCW in 97, called NWO Sold Out. And oftentimes the WCW world title was referred to as the WCW NWO world title during its time in WCW. This also, NWO also spawned a healthy slew of rip-off groups, such as Eddie Guerrero's Latin Latino World Order, the Blue Meanies Blue World Order, and the Juggalo World Order, which also saw Scott Hall, Kevin Natch, and Salt Sean Waltman wrestling as part of that group in the Insane Clown Posse's Wrestling Federation, which I do not remember the name of off the top of my head. So yeah, the NWO was huge. And they spawned a lot of stuff. It was a major storyline. So that is pretty much the end of the NWO, except for NWO Japan. There was an imitation group that used a lot of the mannerisms and signs, which was the Bullet Club, which was another huge group, but it was huge in Japan. And they used a lot of the mannerisms and a lot of their other stuff. And they say that was the closest group to the NWO, and it was big in Japan. Uh, it existed a little bit in Ring of Honor, but they're mostly big in Japan. And the Bull Club had a huge roster. But we're not getting into the Bull Club in this video. So that was the history of the NWO. It's a rich and storied history going back to the Viking Age. When Hulk Hogan decided to form the NWO when he was five years old. None of what I just said is true. But yeah, join me next week and we're going to talk about something else.